Hi everyone, my name is Vanessa Batts and I'm a program leader with Latinitas. Let's go ahead and get started on this week's lesson. All right, we see it all around us. We get to see it as murals when we're traveling through a city. We get to view it on display when we're visiting a museum. And we even get to see it when we're in school learning about it. When you think about famous artists, who do you think of? Pablo Picasso, Andy Warhol, Vincent Van Gogh, Salvador Dali, and many more. But what do all these artists have in common? They're all men. So for today's lesson, we will be learning about four different styles of art and four women artists in these styles that need more recognition. So let's go ahead and discuss about these four styles. The first style of art that we will be discussing today is Cubism. Cubism is a style of art that tries to showcase all possible viewpoints of an object or living thing. It's called Cubism because the subject of the art is usually portrayed in cubes or in other geometrical shapes. The next style of art is called abstract art. Abstract art is modern art. It is not meant to represent images that we see in our everyday life. It does have co color, lines, and forms, but it's not meant to portray living things or people. The next style of art is expressionism. This represents the world as subjective, so how the artist feels as opposed to how it is scientifically. It is meant to convey moods and ideas to try to get an emotional effect out of the viewer. And last but not least, we have Surrealism. Surrealism represents the artist's unconscious mind. Think of it as images that your mind creates on its own, kind of like dreams. So now that we've discussed these four different types of styles in art, let's go ahead and discuss four women artists that portray these styles of art. The first artist is Grace Hardigan. Critics and historians have called Grace Hardigan both a second-generation expressionist painter and a forebearer of pop art, though she was not satisfied with either categorization. In explaining the content and purpose of her work, Hardigan once said, Perhaps the subject of my art is like the definition of humor, emotional pain remembered in tranquility. She was a disciple of Jackson Pollock and Willem de Kooning and also studied with Isaac Lane Muse. The second artist we have is Bridget Riley. Bridget Riley is an abstract painter who came to prominence in the American op art movement of the 1960s after her inclusion in the 1965 exhibition The Responsive Eye at the Museum of Modern Arts. There, her black and white paintings, which created illusions of movement, were shown. In the late 60s, she introduced color into her work and went on to win the prize for painting at the 1968 Venice Biennale. Since then, her work has unfolded through numerous groups and series that engaged the viewer's perception to induce simultaneously shifting patterns of forms and changing optical mixtures of colors. Now we have Frida Kahlo. She was a Mexican painter known for her many portraits, self-portraits, and works inspired by the nature and artifacts of Mexico. Inspired by the country's popular culture, she employed a folk art style to explore questions of identity, post-colonialism, gender, class, and race in Mexican society. She is considered a surrealism artist. And last, but definitely not least, we have Marie Vodobrieff. She is internationally known for convincingly combining elements of cubism with pointillism and through the use of the golden ratio for laying out paintings. She has been accredited with being the first female cubist painter. Though she lived the greater part of her life abroad, her formative years as a Cubist painter in France and her mature years in England, she is often referred to as the Russian painter. Before we get into this week's activity, here is what you will need to gather to do the activity. It can be paint, paint brushes, markers, crayons, color pencils, pencils, paper, an index card, or construction paper. Honestly, it can really be anything that you can find around your household as long as you can get creative with it. 
Do not limit yourself to what is on the screen. Now that we've discussed these four different styles of art and these four famous women artists, let's go ahead and go into this week's activity. So for this week, I would like you to choose one of these famous women artists and either recreate one of her paintings or paint in her style. Let's go ahead and see an example that I created. As you can see, I have all of my supplies lined up and ready to go to start creating. For this first project, I am creating my own abstract art. So I came up with my own idea to implement the style of abstract. For my second project, I will be recreating one of Grace Hardigan's paintings.
Here is the final product. Again, this first one, I recreated one of Grace Hardigan's Expressionism paintings. And then the second one was my own creation of abstract art. Again, you don't have to do this exactly. It is completely up to you to be as creative as you'd like, as long as you recreate or create in the style.